Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been notably coming up with exceptional ideas for the development of the country. Be it the Palm Islands or the Line, the country has brought in ideas that have shook the world to the core. The country mostly depends on hydrocarbons for most of its energy, so it naturally came as a surprise when the news came out of it turning to renewable energy. However, Saudi Arabia is blessed with a long coastline and intense amount of heat. This adds to their capacity of going by the green idea. This idea has been around for a long time, but only recently has it become more prominent. What is the Saudi Green Initiative? The Saudi Green Initiative and the Middle East Green Initiative are trying to bring together countries facing similar struggles for energy production. The official website of the Saudi Green Initiative says, Turning the desert green and rehabilitating 40 million hectares of land over the coming decades is a cornerstone of the Saudi Green Initiative. A national study is currently underway to develop the master plan for planting 10 billion trees. Tree planting afforestation can improve air quality, reduce sandstorms, combat desertification, and lower temperatures in adjacent areas. The plan includes the implementation of the so-called world's largest tree planting project. The goal is to restore about 40 million hectares of devastated land. As Aid M. Belbagi puts, while environmental damage in the region has long been ignored, the efforts now being made to reverse this trend are commendable. Why are Arabs planning to go the green way? Now you see, oil was magical to the Arabs. Not only did it bring them economic growth, but it also contributed to the culture affluence of the Arabian Peninsula. It changed the way the world saw the inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula. However, exorbitant oil consumption has a significant impact on the climate and is attributed to many ecological damages and rising temperatures. The intensive use of machinery and the growth of heavy industry have caused some serious air pollution. Country temperatures rise to 60 degrees Celsius in the summer. This means that the air-conditioned lifestyle that was once the traditional Arab lifestyle now seems impossible. The most beneficial way for the kingdom to look at renewable energy is through solar energy. It needs to be constantly updated extensively in order to remain an efficient and reliable source. Saudi Arabia's woodlands have remained unchanged since 1990 at around 0.5%. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman looks forward to a complete transformation of the country's economy. What is Prince Mohammed planned? The kingdom is determined to make a lasting global impact, the Crown Prince said. In some cases, the fertile land of Saudi Arabia was transformed into arid land. In Al-Badel, for example, Bedouin tribes were required by law to settle in the area, which ultimately led to overgrazing. Originally, lush meadows are reminiscent of the past. Prince Mohammed's plan seems to be not only to plant it in areas that were not previously covered with trees, but also to restore the devastated land. However, such projects will basically completely change the natural environment of the area and must be carried out with the utmost care and consistency. It is speculated that even small mistakes can have a dramatic impact on the country's sensitive ecosystems. The country is also planning to lower its carbon footprints apart from the tree planting program under its de facto ruler, the Crown Prince who believes that the country would reduce carbon emissions by more than 4% of global contributions. How is the initiative being perceived? This initiative has been opposed by many who believe that this is another major project in the country and has little chance of being realized. Nadine Farajula, who is the program director of the Climate Change and Environment Program at the Issam Fares Institute at the American University of Beirut, is one of the opinion that trees would most possibly be planted in urban and semi-urban regions and won't have that strong of an impact. According to him, I don't buy into this. The climate in Saudi Arabia is not going to change by planting trees. He is also reported as saying the number of 10 billion trees is mind-boggling. He is unsure whether nurseries in the area can produce sufficient trees to meet the requirements of the project. If it takes 20 years to plant 10 billion trees, that means they have to plant around 1.5 million trees a day, he says. Now, it is noteworthy that the Let's Make It Green campaign initiated by the Saudi Arabia in October in 2020 resulted in the planting of more than 10 million trees over six months. The project is also thought to be quite less feasible as the country has poor water management and has the third lowest precipitation worldwide. Thus, such large-scale afforestation of about 10 billion trees raises a lot of questions as to how rational the initiative actually is. The Minister of Environment of Saudi Arabia says that water produced by fossil fuel-powered desalination plants or groundwater would be used for irrigation. The project would focus on already treated water, rainwater, cloud seeding, and seawater. 
In 2020, the World Economic Forum launched an initiative which emphasized on growing, restoring, and conserving one trillion trees all across the world. The WEF said that the nature-based solutions can provide up to one-third of the emissions reductions required by 2030 to meet the Paris Agreement targets. However, Farajala said that tree planting is not a silver bullet and counterbalancing carbon emissions with trees is like pennywise and pound foolish. Also noteworthy is Saudi Arabia's lack of fulfillment of the promises it makes to reducing its volume of carbon emissions, which rather have more than doubled between 2000 and 2015. Saudi Arabia, like its other Gulf oil producer counterparts, believes in producing the last drops of oil the world would consume. Critics have observed that the Crown Prince's projects are just too dreamy and have little to do with reality. A former employee at Neom, Prince Mohammed's $500 billion project, said, When I left, I felt almost as though I was emerging from some sort of cult, Prince Mohammed's flagship project told the Wall Street Journal. There are, however, many who support this initiative. Environmentalists call on the region to accelerate its shift toward renewables to set an example of an economic transition away from hydrocarbon revenues. A Saudi citizen, Sarah Al-Tuwajiri, has the following opinion on the project. Our nation trusts the government, so anything that the government does toward a green movement is definitely going to help people take the issue more seriously. She says that even though more progress is needed, it is something to be proud of, that environmental awareness is rising, as access to information is not limited anymore, thanks to the internet and social networks. Tatiana Antonelli Abella is someone who strongly advocates planting projects in arid climates. She describes UAE's national tree, the drought-tolerant tree. The UAE's machine of survival, the taps water stored deep in the sand and requires only two years of irrigation when artificially planted. According to Tatiana, Saudi Arabia would benefit from carefully researching what trees to plant. For example, the country could restore existing mangroves and plant mangrove trees that have huge advantages in terms of coastal protection and absorbing carbon dioxide. The Saudi Minister of Environment has stressed the local tree species will be favored. In terms of tree planting, the most important thing is always to look into what we have already existing rather than the out of the blue creating new things, Abella said. Saudi Arabia is aiming to put up a strong fight against global warming. If properly implemented, the plan would provide opportunities for long-term profits for the country. It would be increasing jobs in the medicinal plant and ecotourism industries to rural communities. They amount to around 16% of the population. This would align with the prime objective of the Crown Prince's reform plan vision in 2030 to develop a thriving non-oil economy. The kingdom is placing a strong focus on wind and solar energy. However, such energy has a constant problem of not always being available, as the sun wouldn't always be shining, and neither would the wind always be blowing. Experts are of the opinion that greening deserts could regenerate degenerated and polluted soil. It could also result in the growth of new plants. All of this would eventually control floods as flood water would be retained and infiltrated. So what are your opinions on this? Do you think it's an extremely revolutionary and thoughtful decision by the Saudi Arabian government? Or are you of the opinion that it's just too hasty and demanding? Do let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to Tech Hook. Also, don't forget to press that bell icon below. This way you never miss out on all the new and interesting videos that we have come up with.